Hey, welcome everybody to Developing and Using Ratios 2. This resource is titled Entry Level Activities and it picks up from where getting started left off. And this particular resource is gonna take us through the initial stages of actually getting the learners to develop some conceptual understanding around ratios. This activity is an entry level activity. That is, it's designed for learners who have had very little experience with ratios before. I use it with all learners initially. And uh, I found that it will bring in those learners who are at the lowest steps as well, step one, step two, and uh, as well as keep some of the higher level students satisfied. Number two, it cultivates success and confidence. And that's really important at this point, that we're not throwing learners into uh, problems or giving them problems that are overly complex and they can't solve or only just solve. We want this to be easy. We want them to leave this lesson saying, hey, that was really easy actually, or you know, even complaining a little bit about it. This activity develops conceptual understanding. You'll see that as we go on and how that differs from just calculation and so on and finally it sets up learners for more complex thinking and we're going to move into the more complex stuff soon but for now we'll just stick to this entry level activity so here's the activity i've handed out post-its two different colors to each group learners are working in groups whatever number they want whoever they're comfortable with uh, they have two color post-its and i simply ask them what does one to two mean, a ratio of one to two, and can you make it out of the post-its? While they're doing this, I wander around, I sort of do a formative assessment to see where they're at. But the idea is that it means one to two. And that seems really simple, but actually this is the starting point. One to two means that for every white post-it, we're gonna have two gold post-its, one to two. And we want them to make that out of the post-its on their table. And then we're going to increase it. So now we're going to uh, either show on a PowerPoint or show on the board the ratio 3 to 4. And you've already written the 3 in, or drawn the 3 in, and you're going to ask them to complete the ratio. So on their tables, they're going to be putting out the, the three post-its of one color. And they have to work out how many go beside that. And the answer is 4. Now the crazy thing is, is that the learners are often thinking there's some sort of trick at this point. And why is it so easy? You know, maths is meant to be hard. It's really not. And so you might want to remind them, there's no tricks. This is how simple it is. This is it. I just repeat, you know, a two to four ratio. Well, what if we had four on this side? How many would need to go on the other side? And again, in groups with the post-its, they're working it out, thinking about how that might happen. And most of them will work out that it's two to four. And, uh, and often by now, they're beginning to complain that this is really easy. You know, what's the point and all that sort of thing. That is perfect. You want them doing that because then you can hit them with this. Okay, it's a two to four ratio. So we know that for every two, we need four. What if there was only one on one side? How many would need to go on the other side to make that two to four ratio? Now here's where things get interesting because what they have to do is they have to look at the relationship between the two and the one and they have to work out what's happened on that side. And what's happened is it's been halved. So we have to halve the other side as well. And this is where the concept of invisible numbers will come in and we'll look at this in the next session as well and really draw this out some more. This is kind of a ne the next pivotal piece of understanding for the learners. We've gone two to four and they can just model that straight following the numbers. But what happens when the quantities change? And so we want to keep this very simple and they're beginning to get this. So again, conceptual understanding, not difficulty of mathematics. And then I continue to increase them. So we have a ratio two to three. I'll write this on the board and you have four on this side, how many are gonna go on the other side? And so by now in their groups, they should be realizing that for every two, they're gonna need three. For every two, they're gonna need three. And therefore, there's six on the other side, so we have four to six. And you're showing them and making it very explicit that it's two to three, two to three, and it doesn't matter how many twos we have, for each of those, there'll be a three. I keep them coming, ratio one to three. If you have two on this side, how many is going to go on the other side? And so again, you give them the post-its or they have them already on their tables and they're trying to work out what exactly it's going to be. A ratio of one to three means that for every one, there's going to be three. For every one, there's going to be three. So therefore, there's six. So this is how this works. Hopefully, they're having a lot of success at this point. And again, they're finding it easy. Sometimes they're still suspecting that it's going to get really difficult. But this is it. This is the conceptual understanding. What we want in addition to that is the learners recognizing that because this was one to three, the one, what's happened to the one to get us to the four? Well, it's been multiplied by four. And therefore, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other side as well. So we're going to have to multiply three by four which is gonna give us 12. So you see there's two ways of working it out. 
One is for every one, we want three. Most learners should be able to get that. But there's a next level that you want to begin to cultivate and get them to think about. What happened to the one to get it to four? Well, we multiplied it by four. And therefore, whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. We multiply three by four and get 12. That's as hard as it's going to get today. That's the activity finished. In summary, this activity is designed to cultivate success. You want to talk about equal parts. You could begin to talk about hidden numbers. What happens to one side must happen to the other side, and we'll talk about this in the next section, and gradually raise the complexity. But it's better to be too easy than to damage the confidence. So you really do want them leaving feeling like this was easy, um, because things will heat up very quickly, and they'll get to apply their knowledge here to other things. <laughs>